Well, can you just make sure you cut that five minutes while I was talking about Aussie Cabernet out there? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, number 18, blind wine tasting. Uh, we've got another six wines provided by Sometimes Always, which if you like the idea of any of these wines on the show, you can join our Discord channel and get 10% off. Uh, let's get straight into it because we're in a 16 square meter room on a 28 degree day. Uh, let's go. Uh, week what, 18 or 19 or something at this stage. We're going pretty hot. Six more, it looks like it's a uh, four and two, red to white. We'll see, wine number one. Oh, it's like medium to full bodied. It's got a little, a little bit of age on it, it's quite concentrated, but then it's got this lovely like kind of grainy tannins and a little bit of acidity. It smells great. It's got a lovely kind of like sour cherry herbaceous thing. Mm. So this has got a fair bit of tannin in it, which is that shit that we've been talking about that feels like licking a cat or something similar to that, except, you know, if you're not bad way. Uh, I'm going to say Old World Syrah. It's got some like fruit weight to it, but then it's really kind of, there's all these secondary characteristics to it. It's a little bit more complex. And yeah, this really does taste in, taste like biting into like a really crisp, ripe apple. Just... I'm actually gonna go with Cabernet and dad gave me a little life hack talking about wine tasting. He said that if it smells green, it's probably Cabernet or a whole bunch of Raz or Syrah. So I'm gonna go with Cabernet and if I'm wrong, dad, I'm coming for you. So Cab. It's good on pretty much any any day. This could be really, really good chilled. It's good at room temperature. It's very, yeah, it's a very flexible wine and I hope it comes in at a good price. Like if it's any, anywhere under $40, I'm stoked because I think this is a really good one. Wine number two. Are all these wines not from Australia? Like, is this some sort of game today where at least these... I'm just, I feel like this is a trick. Another red. This one looks a little bit lighter. The other one's got a quite deep red color. This one's looking a little bit fruitier. Feels very New World, like New World Grenache kind of vibes. It's like really deep, ripe, like a big, ripe blueberry. Well, if I thought the first wine was Syrah, this is definitely Cabernet Franc or um, Gamay. Um, a lot more kind of lighter fruit concentration. It's got a little bit more mouthfeel as well, and, and it's just the acidity's there. This feels like a variety that kind of gets to this really big peak of alcohol and acidity before dropping off a clip, and they've kind of just nailed the picking of it. So it feels like something like Grenache. Uh, Pinot's generally expensive, I've heard, so I'll say 40. And I'll have six bottles of it. Quite enjoyed that one. But there is a nice little structure and a bit more interest than just beyond a really big plummy fruit thing that's kind of going on here. Uh, but overall, I think it's a really good one. White wine, switching it up. It's quite yellow. Why does every, every time I go to talk about white wine, I'm just like, what sort of piss is it? Relatively dehydrated. Well, it's not sparkling, but it's really delicious. I think it's just fucking yummy wine. It feels like a Sauvignon or something like that. Yeah, 100% that's a Riesling. I think Australian Riesling, it's quite well made. For you, it's a little bit off the beaten path with something like a Chardonnay, which is generally pretty reliable and identifiable, but this feels a little bit lost in the woods, I guess. It, it hasn't got that real textural, I don't think it's Chardonnay, for whatever reason. Um, watch it be Chardonnay for fuck's sake, the one time. Awesome wine. Oh, yeah, all about this. This is a really well-tailored wine. Like, it's lazy, it's, if there's any oak, it's barely there, but it's really well integrated and the flavors that you get from oak are really, like, seeped into this wine. I'm gonna do something outlandish. I'm gonna say it is a really expensive German Riesling and it's a little bit off dry, so. Let's take German Riesling, say $40 a bottle, and I'm gonna take, I'm taking a little free pack, so. literal uh like willy wonka bubble gum like genuinely feel like i'm charlie i feel like a bit like charlie right now whoa it is like a candy delicious candy it feels like red paint um <laughs> whoa this is a candy this is candy wine holy shit it kind of smells like meat a little bit like a like a dried prosciutto or something, but like a fruity dried prosciutto. This is like someone's just like giving you a little, like a Zappo. Remember those like uh, lolly Zappos? It's like a great version of that because it's got so much acid. Yeah, it smells like those kind of raspberry pastilles or licorice pastilles. It's insane. Musky as well. It's lovely kind of rhubarb note as well coming through. I think it's Italian. Um, the reason I think it's Italian is because it speaks with its hands. No, um, get me like I need that needs an ice bucket like right now, and that needs um, some good times. That's so much fun. But holy shit, that's great, Papa Bubba, and it's pretty dope. 
find number five. Really interestingly coloured as well. Mm. It's a little bit cloudier than wine number three. Like, if you compare them side by side, there's a lot more, I don't know, it's almost like clarification. Like Overall, it smells like a trip to the beach with a, a bunch of calippos and a picnic blanket and a whole bunch of sand. Just, it looks quite closed. Um, it's not heaps jumping out. It's really, um, I'm gonna go back to the boring. Boring Betty over here. I love the flavor of this one. It's got a lovely texture. Um, it's got this kind of nectarine, like fleshy character to it. Like a really grown up muted version of Whiz Fizz, sort of like there on your tongue, which is the back of the palate, I believe. I assume that's what they mean when they say front and back of palate, like where it sits on your tongue. But... The acidity is nice, actually. It's like really refreshing, a little bit tingly. I'm thinking a blend. I'd be really presently surprised if there was um, a bit of Bionia or even perhaps um, Vermentino. Price wise, 38. And how much do I want? One of three bottles. Not by any means the worst, not by any means the best. And last but not least, a nice little red. Wow, this one's like Olo Tapenade. This looks closer to wine number one than two or three, and I thought that was a Cabernet, so let's see if this is another big boy. Ripe rhubarb, like stewed rhubarb kind of thing, a bit of strawberry in there as well. Cabernet, green. It could also be maybe like a Syrah blend. Like Rhone Syrah, it's got vibes of Grenache, it's got this really interesting kind of DNA to it. Interesting. This smells very uh, like my dad's wine. Like quite often when I'm at dad's place and I'm trying wines, it smells like uh, old wood and this smells like old wood. There's a really nice kind of whiff of um, oak on the nose as well. Yeah, I'm gonna go with Cabernet Blend, really chewy kind of big tannins. Shiraz or Syrah. I, I don't typically like Shiraz, like it's not something that I'll drink very often. It's very much so a tequila shot of wines for me, but I don't mind it. 12 bottles. Who the fuck knows what it costs? Give me, give me a case. Absolutely my favorite wine of the lineup. Uh, give me a case. Particularly fascinated by this lineup more than a whole bunch of others to see what everybody else thinks. All right, we're doing it again. Um, how did we go? What did you all think of the uh, half dozen that we've got before us? Man, Lots of reds, actually, and it was really hard. <laughs> Four reds! Yeah, so it's majority reds. Oh, yeah. that's not good. <laughs> uh, so first wine, uh, I had a couple of bottles of this. I thought it was a really awesome little Italian kind of number. I don't necessarily know what variety, but I feel it was, it like had like sour cherry, it had like plenty of tannin acid. It was really, I thought it was an awesome wine. Um, Lucky, what was it? 30 bucks? I said 40. Damn, I said 45. Yeah, we all thought oh. it was Damn. Oh, yeah, definitely can't take it inside. Uh, it says Vigneron, so it's French. Uh, it's, oh no, it's Menthea! That is a curveball. Fuck yeah, that's cool. Wow. So yeah, so this is Spanish rather than Italian or French, but yeah, it's definitely our world in that part of the world. So yum, so I really like that. 30 things, so good. 30, uh, yeah, again, 30 bucks. I'll grab a few bottles of that. <laughs> Numero dos. Uh, this is some kind of like pretty dense, like Grenache boy. I, I don't know. It's it was it was thick. I actually think I had Cabernet Franc glasses on for most of these wines. <laughs> I call this Cabernet Franc. Yeah, uh, enough acidity. Yeah. Just enough acidity. What have we got? Twenty seven dollars. Forty five. I have thirty five wow. bucks. Whatever this is. Next skin Is it Shiraz? Shiraz. This Shiraz. is Shiraz. This is preservative free Shiraz from Gundagai. Gundagai. What? Oh my days. This is so sick. That so, is awesome. I said so many incorrect things. Don't worry, we yeah, all did. Know we all did. Yeah, I, yeah. I thought this was old world Cabernet Franc. No. Amazing. <laughs> I said New World Grenache. So, uh, no one would have guessed Canberra no, or Gundagai. No, no one or would have Shiraz. guessed that. Shiraz. I think that's the biggest curveball. That is beautifully yes. made. So like, this is basically Shiraz from a cola climate without any sulfur added. So it is quite lively and bright. <laughs> uh, yummy wine. Really good. Really great price from an awesome producer and an uh, underrated part of the show. Number three, uh, I was super into this. Oops, I, I was into it one. too. I think it would have been nice a little bit cooler. I agree. But I thought German Riesling. <gasps> I thought German Riesling. Mm. I thought Savignon. Yeah, come on, this is the song the Yeah, what do we got? 45 on the money. What do we got? I said 40. What do we got? What do we got? Our section. My days. It is Riesling. Riesling. 
from Alsace. Damn, I Daniel. Uh, is, that, right. is that the Alsace just outside of Berlin? So or really cool producer, may have fun, delicious. Um, Gardy, so supernatural too. Yeah. Um, so Al- Alsace is on the border of France and Germany, mm-hmm. on the, fr- the French side. Uh, so yeah. like up in the Alps, pretty pretty hot summers, so mm-hmm. it gets pretty like ripe and fleshy. Um, but this was, was really awesome. cool. Yeah. <laughs> Number four. Uh, I thought you would have been super into this because it smells like hubba bubba. It smells it like grape hubba yeah, bubba. Musky, like a hundred percent. It was yeah, super pretty. What do we got? Forty five dollars. I said forty. I'm happy with 30. that. Thirty. Said thirty. What the fuck is this? Pinot Noir from. Walnut. Code door. Holy shit. It's, oh, it's wow. IGP, so. Italian grape right. produces these IGP, yeah. It's like an, it's so it's in Burgundy, but not, not in village. one of the uh, village appellations, so they can't really call it Burgundy. Um, but wow. for $45, that's kind of, that's the weirdest Burgundy I've ever tried. Mm. Number five. Uh, I had some kind of mid weight textural white that I really didn't identify. It was probably the most like neutral of the ones we tried today, but I still liked it. How much is it? Whoa! Whoa! Whoa. Probably my least favorite wine. That's a red wine bottle, sir. It's It's Sol and Alina. What the hell is this? This is Italian. But Slovenian! Yeah, Holy Slovenian. shit, I haven't had any Slovenian. So it's Malvasia. So it is that kind of like textural Italianish yeah. thing, but not from Italy. No. Um, this is fucking weird. Um, but cool. Kind of cloudy, isn't it? It's definitely yeah, cloudy. So this is bits in it. So this is a properly natural Slovenian winemaker. Uh, Trenbath and Taylor can put this in, so really cool, interesting import. I've had a lot of like cheap knockoff natural Slovenian wines, so to have something that's <laughs> really authentic is quite refreshing. Well, yeah, and honestly, Henry, right? overall, uh, this is this is definitely <laughs> worth a try. But if you haven't had any Slovenian wines, you probably won't be disappointed with this. Number six. <laughs> Uh, holy shit, what the fuck was this? But I thought it was awesome. Oh, it was an Australian Shiraz. I, I thought this was an amazing one. I had absolutely no idea what it was, but I thought it was brilliant. What have we got? $30! Yeah, I said $35, so I'm feeling $30. good about that. $30! Oh, well, that wow. Not Australian. Well, Syrah I got from uh, Western Rhone Delta. Wow, what <laughs> That's why I like it. I love Rhone Syrah, and yeah. this is really fucking cool. Right. Um, for th- $30, you say? Don't, yeah, don't even bother buying it. I've bought it all already. This is fucking cool. Yeah, I'm super into this. Cool, uh, really awesome little array of wines. I think everyone's going home with something different today. Uh, awesome, thanks guys. Bye. Bye.